Yo, 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 what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Adam Moose, and today in this series called In Depth, I'm going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about Nidalee Jungle. The Untamed know no fear. Nidalee is one of the highest skill cap champs in the entire game with her fast paced, aggressive playstyle. She's a ton of fun to play, but takes so much mastery if you really want to make use of her kit. If you enjoy the content, it really helps me out if you could leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to help your boy out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to talk with me and other members in the community, be sure to join the Discord link that's in the description. Enjoy the video. Nidalee's passive, it's called Prowl and Hunt. While in Brush, Nidalee gains bonus movement speed for 2 seconds, which is increased when facing visible enemy champions. For Hunt, hitting monsters or enemy champions with your Javelin Toss or Bushwhack marks them as hunted for 4 seconds. This reveals them and grants Nidalee bonus movement speed for the whole duration, which is also increased when facing a hunted target. Additionally, Nidalee's first use of Takedown and Pounce against hunted targets will be empowered. Nidalee's Q is called Javelin Toss and Takedown. Nidalee hurls a Javelin in a line in the target direction, dealing magic damage to the first enemy that it hits. This damage is increased based on the distance that it travels. This skill shot pairs amazingly with CC, since it can be easily dodged, and if it can land guaranteed, you'll most times win the fight. In Cougar form, Nidalee's next basic attack gains bonus range, and is modified to deal bonus magic damage increased based on the target's missing health. This can be used as an auto attack reset and is Nidalee's main DPS tool while in cougar form. Takedown also deals 40% increased damage to hunted targets, making this a very deadly execute tool. Nidalee's W is called Bushwhack and Pounce. Nidalee lays a trap at the target location, which becomes stealthed after arming. These traps last for 2 minutes and grant sight when placed down which is very useful to check bushes and spot enemies who are out of vision. Upon contact with an enemy, the trap will spring, dealing magic damage every second over 4 seconds. In cougar form, Nidalee pounces in the target direction, dealing magic damage to nearby enemies upon arrival. Nidalee also gains increased range on her pounce against hunted enemies, making this her main mobility spell and gap closer. In addition, killing an enemy while in cougar form or while using Pounce's hunt bonus will reduce its cooldown. Understanding how to make use of the reduced cooldown and increased dash range will not only aid in speeding up your clears, but also in finding lethal against enemy carries. Nidalee's E is called Primal Surge and Swipe. Nidalee evokes the spirit of the cougar, healing herself or an allied champion based on their missing health. Whoever she heals then gains bonus attack speed for 7 seconds. This is not only a great sustain tool, but is also a nice DPS steroid, especially if used on an ally AD carry. In cougar form, Nidalee swipes her claws in the target direction, dealing AoE magic damage to all enemies within the area. This is a simple ability that provides Nidalee with some solid AoE damage that's on a very short cooldown. Nidalee's ultimate is called Aspect of the Cougar. Nidalee transforms herself into a cougar, gaining melee attacks with 125 range, as well as new abilities. You can then transform back into human form, gaining ranged attacks, and your original abilities. Additionally, triggering Hunt resets aspect of the cooler's cooldown if Nidalee is in human form. Nidalee begins with one rank in her ultimate, and every point put into it will rank up her cooler form abilities. Although this does not seem impactful, getting multiple points into aspect of the cougar will turn Nidalee into an absolute menace. This is at the core of Nid's kit and is the main reason as to why she is so difficult to pilot. She technically has 6 abilities, and learning the best times to use each ability is very difficult to master. For ability maxing, Nidalee maxes Q first, E second, and W third in all games. Before we get into Nidalee's strategy, let's go over some mechanical tips that will instantly improve your game since Nidalee's kit can be very overwhelming at first. First is the basic auto attack cancels that should be done most times for increased DPS. In human form, auto Q and auto E are both simple for extra auto damage from range. In cougar form, auto Q, auto W, and auto E are all effective to get that extra damage in close range fights. Next are the basic animation cancels which can be all used for increased efficiency between abilities. 
first is QW and QE in human form, which can be used in all points in the game. For cougar form, QW, EQ, and EW are going to be your go-tos, which will make a huge difference when you're executing targets. You can even cancel your pounce and transform animation, dashing into range to poke or peel back to heal. Now, if you really want to take your Nidalee game to the next level, you need to learn her main combos. First is the basic human form combo, which is auto attack, Q, W, E, and auto attack. This takes into account all of her animation cancels and increases your DPS. For cougar form, auto attack EQW is the standard DPS combo. If you want to do full short range burst, Q auto attack RWE auto attack Q is the go-to. Next and very important is the double pounce refresh, which can be used to greatly speed up your clear or for some extra damage in fights. Simply WQR, WEQ, W. Using Javelin Tosh and Bushwhack on the same camp will allow you to refresh Pounce's cooldown twice, and this will be the most important thing to learn for when you're clearing. Last is the Pounce Transform, which makes use of all of your spells while transitioning between forms for max damage. WR back to human form, QE auto attack, R again back to cougar, and finish with EQ. Keep in mind that Nidalee has tons of diversity when it comes to combos, and covering every single thing would be an entire video in itself. If you want to see more, I've linked a very helpful video in the description, or you can go back to these combos and slow down the video to make it easier. Next up, let's discuss Nid's best rune setups for Season 12. To start off, Nidalee has quite a few keystone options. First is Electrocute and Dark Harvest, which both revolve around Burst. Electrocute is the most consistent damage option, while Dark Harvest provides you with more late game carry potential when you get enough stacks. To close out the Domination Tree, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, or Zombie Ward for higher elos, and either Treasure Hunter or Relentless Hunter are going to be your main options. For Secondary, Sorcery with Transcendence, Absolute Focus, and Water Walking, or Inspiration with Magical Footwear, Futures Market, and Cosmic Insight are the most standard choices. First Strike is another keystone that has gained some priority recently, which although less consistent, has some pretty high snowball potential due to the extra gold and burst that it provides. With this setup you want to be running Magical Footwear, Futures Market, and Cosmic Insight. Last is Conqueror, which although can be tough to use for some new players, it's definitely very strong into tankier teams. To finish off the Precision Tree, Triumph, Legend Alacrity or Tenacity, and Coup de Grasse to close it out. You can also run Domination Secondary with both Conquer and First Strike, along with the Sorcery and Inspiration pages that were mentioned earlier. For Rune Shards, Nidalee runs Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and either Armor or MR, depending on enemy team comp and your jungle matchup. Now that we've got our runes down, let's discuss Nidalee's best item builds. To start, both Red and Blue Smite are viable choices. Red Smite is the better option for dueling power, while Blue Smite is great to aid in landing spears and gap closing against more mobile teams. Dark Seal is also a very powerful item to pick up early, with any extra gold since it can provide you with massive snowball potential for such a cheap price. For boots, Sorcerer's Shoes are by far the most common for burst, Ionian Boots of Lucidity are great into teams with more frontline to allow for more spell rotations, and Merc Treads if you really need tenacity into CC. For Mythics, Nidalee's two main options are Hextech Rocket Belt and Night Harvester. Although Rocket Belt is the better choice in my opinion, using the active properly makes it more difficult to learn. With that being said, Night Harvester can still be really strong, especially into mobile teams as your spears will hit like a truck. For core items, Zhonya's Hourglass is crucial for its active, Void Staff to shred magic resist, Lich Bane for massive burst, and Shadow Flame for bonus damage against shields. From this point, Nidalee's build is pretty straightforward, picking up more damage to burst enemy carries, while also getting some defensive stats to avoid getting insta-killed. Though there are not that many options to choose from, picking up the correct items at the right time will make a big difference in your results. Now let's discuss Nidalee's jungle strategy and pathing. First is to understand that Nidalee is an early game jungler, but she's not useless late game. With that being said, your goal should be to get the lead early to maximize your usefulness in the later stages. Since she farms quickly, has strong invades and gank presence, 
it's very important to constantly evaluate the map state and make decisions based on what will have the most impact. Since Nidalee can change your playstyle depending on the game, there are a couple factors that will determine what you should be looking for in each match. First is if your team has strong gank setup or snowball potential, such as a Renekton top or a Twisted Fate mid, which will easily allow you to land spears on stun targets and pick up free kills. In these cases, you want to path towards these lanes and keep an eye out on the minion wave states. Next is the jungle matchup, which will determine whether you're looking to heavily invade or if you want to power farm your own jungle. Weak early game junglers such as Zack and Amumu are great invade targets as they have pretty much no way to beat you. If you're against a strong duelist such as Xin Zhao, it's important to be a bit more careful and play off your fast clear speeds to gain an advantage. For actual jungle clears, Nid does have a lot of options, so learning them will be extremely important. First is the full clear route, which is the most standard way to gain an advantage before making plays on the map. This is usually done when you don't want to invade or gank, since Nidalee does have a great clear once mastered. Keep in mind that when you start on blue side you want to be leveling E at level 2, while on red side you want to take W to deal AoE damage. Next is the 3 camp gank or invade path, which can either be done by clearing red raptors gromp or red blue gromp. This is a more aggressive path to make use of Nidalee's amazing early game power and start snowballing the map from there. You can also adapt this to a 4 or 5 camp, or invading and stealing the enemy's jungle just make sure to always keep the enemy jungler and laners with priority in mind. Last is that Nidalee has an amazing level 1 and 2, so looking for early cheeses and late invades will definitely catch your enemies off guard. This gets even better if your team has strong level 1 champions such as Braum, Ash, and Twisted Fate. Simply wait until the enemy's buff spawns at 130, walk in with your entire team, and get a huge lead from there. Learning how to make use of Nidalee's aggressive kit will come with time, and is probably the single most important thing to learn if you want to succeed with her. Nidalee's biggest weakness is simply how hard she is to play, making her one of the most difficult champs to really start seeing results on. Don't get me wrong, she is both very powerful and fun to play once mastered, it's just getting there that takes a while. This not only goes for mechanics in skirmishes and teamfights, but even more importantly, clearing mechanics. Nid requires strong clearing fundamentals and practice to even clear up to the speeds necessary to make her viable. To build on this, since Nidalee is so squishy and relies on being slippery to be effective, making any misplays will usually just mean missing out on a kill or instant death. This is why Nid struggles into junglers such as Rek'Sai, Nocturne, Rengar, Poppy, and Shaco, as they all have tools in their kit to heavily punish you when you're out of position. Next is that Nidalee requires a ton of game knowledge to play to her maximum potential, which along with her mechanics makes her very overwhelming to pick up for new players. Lastly, since Nidalee has no CC in her kit and builds full damage, falling behind means you'll be extremely useless. Not knowing how to push your advantage early and get a lead for your team will make your job very difficult, adding another layer to Nidalee's already complex playstyle. Now let's discuss what makes Nidalee such a powerful pick that has been in the meta for so many years. First is that Nidalee is so much fun to play and her high skill cap makes her one of the best champions to put tons of games into. Mastering Nidalee is not only rewarding enjoyment wise, but also for your LP as she's a top tier pick in all elos over a long period of time. Next, since Nidalee has such a flexible kit, her limits pretty much just depend on your skill level. Great Nid players can always find a creative angle to get advantages, making it feel hopeless to play against. To build on this, Nidalee has amazing jungle clears and is very mobile, making her one of the absolute best power farming and invading junglers in the entire game. This strength not only lets you get huge CS leads, but also allows a good Nidalee to track enemy junglers pathing and constantly keep a chokehold on them. This is why Nidalee destroys junglers such as Zac, Amumu, Graves, Viego, and Karthus since she can either outplay them by dodging key abilities or prey on them in the jungle, taking their camps and pressuring them with no counterplay. Next is that Nidalee is extremely strong when paired with CC setup champions such as Leona, Twisted Fate, and Renekton. Whenever CC lands, simply throw a spear and enjoy the one shot. Having these strong synergies allows you to pick her in the right situations, making her that much more effective. Nidalee is a skill reliant carry jungler who has a high tempo, aggressive playstyle. Although picking her up can be overwhelming, the rewards are definitely worth it. 
If you're looking to go in depth and learn a champion who is viable in literally every meta, Nidalee is definitely the pick for you. That will do it for my season 12 in depth guide on Nidalee jungle. If you want to support my content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with my weekly uploads. If you're looking to add more jungle champs to your pool, make sure to check out the rest of my in-depth series to find more guides just like this one. And finally, if you want to have a chance of winning a free coaching session, make sure to join the discord in the description so you can participate in our monthly giveaways. With all that being said, thanks again for watching, until the next video.